Hello friends. This video is brought to you by MyWayTeaching.com. We shall now start with very important geometrical idea of congruency. We shall start with the concept of congruency of planes, lines and angles. Then we shall understand the concept of congruency of triangles and the correspondence. Then we shall move to the criteria for congruency of triangles that is SSS criteria, SAS criteria, ASA criteria and the RHS criteria for congruency. Let us start with a very important geometrical idea of congruency. To understand the concept, consider that we have two stamps, one white and the other yellow. And now place one stamp over the other. Now since one stamp covers the other completely and exactly. This means that the two stamps are of the same size and same shape. Hence, such objects are said to be congruent. We can say that white and yellow stamp are congruent to each other. And we can say that congruent objects are exact copies of one another. If we give name to our stamp, say F1 and F2, then symbolically we can write F1 is congruent to F2. Look at the two figures. Are they congruent? We can use the method of superposition by taking a trace of one of them and placing it over the other. If the figures cover each other completely, they are congruent. Alternatively, we may cut one of them and place it over the other one. If the figures cover each other completely, they are congruent. And we can write that the plane figure F1 is congruent to plane figure F2. Consider two line segments AB and CD. Now let us see when can two line segments be congruent. Let us try to place CD over AB. Clearly we can see that CD covers AB with C on A and D on B. Hence the line segments AB and CD are congruent. Hence we can say that if two line segments have same length they are congruent. Also the converse is true that means if it is given that the two line segments are congruent then we will have their lengths to be equal. That means if AB is congruent to CD then length of AB is equal to the length of line segment CD. 
let us consider two angles. Let the first one be angle ABC and the second one be angle PQR. Let us now try to superimpose one angle on the other. Clearly, we can see they are exactly the same. So we can say that angle ABC is congruent to angle PQR and also measure of angle ABC is equal to measure of angle PQR. Hence we can say that if two angles have the same measure then they are congruent and also if two angles are congruent then their measures are same. That would mean that if angle ABC is 40 degrees then angle PQR is also 40 degrees. Since angle ABC is congruent to angle PQR. Similarly, two triangles are congruent if they are copies of each other and when they are superimposed, they cover each other exactly. So we can see that both the triangles are congruent. Now let us name them and write symbolically. We will say that triangle ABC and triangle PQR have same size and shape. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR. This means that when we place triangle PQR on ABC, P falls on A, Q falls on B and R falls on C. Also PQ falls on AB, PR falls on AC and QR falls on BC. Hence we can say that if two triangles are congruent then their corresponding parts that is lines and angles that match one another are equal. Let us try to understand why we are saying corresponding parts that match one another. Firstly, let us check if these two triangles are congruent. Clearly, the two are congruent to each other. But what happens if we rotate one of them and try to place them on one another? Then the other vertices may not coincide with the corresponding vertices of the other triangle. Hence, while talking about congruency of triangles, not only the measures of the angles and lengths of the sides matter, but also matching of the vertices matters. That means triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR under the correspondence that A lies on P, B lies on Q and C lies on R. This can also be written as A, B, C 
lies on P, Q, R respectively. Hence, we understand the meaning of correspondence when we talk about congruency of triangles.